Hello. Uh, in this video, I'm going to react to something I've been waiting for for ages. Um, Hi and Lung have made a new song and a new music video. Some of you that watch my streams and my videos on a regular basis will know that I absolutely love them. Uh, for anyone that isn't familiar with it, basically, they're to the normie, I describe them as like a Viking band group, folk music type group, but they do a bunch of European sort of pagan style um, music song things um and their first song that they came out with i fell in love with and i think a lot of people did um but they're still quite niche and not everyone knows about them but i absolutely fell in love with them to the point where i listened to a couple of their songs literally like 12 15 times a day especially for a workout or a run or a bike ride that's what i always go to especially hammer a hip i probably know how you pronounce it but uh, i like the more fighty songs <laughs> And uh, they've not really made any, as far as I know, they've not made any new music for a couple of years now. They came out with their original music. It was really, really good. They came out with, I think it might have been their second album, but it was their first live performance, which was Lifa. And that's where some of my favourite songs are from. And they blew up and they became very popular. And to the point where things like Vikings, the TV show, started using some of the songs as the battle scene uh, themes. Um, I'll just show the name of the thing there, the name of the, uh, the song there, Anno Anna, Anno Anna. Uh, I've listened to a little, I'm going to be reacting to this, because why not, I've listened to a little bit of it so far, and then I thought, why am I not doing a reaction right now, um, so I have heard a little bit of it, and it seems different to their other stuff, which I think is what they're going for, uh, this is part of a new album, which um, I don't think it's all out. I think this might be the first song that they've released, but I really hope that they're going to have some fighty songs. Um, for anyone that wants to know what I mean, type in Heilung Hamra Hippia Live. And uh, it's a proper, like, Viking style battle chant. And I fell in love with it, and it just resonates with me massively. And I listened to that song so far, I've probably listened to it about genuinely two and a half thousand times. I, I adore it. I absolutely adore that song, and anyone who, you know, knows me, um, will know I'm obsessed with it. Um, anyway, I suppose we should do it. Let's react. So I've listened to like the first sort of minute of it. The music videos they've made are always really cool. Oh, they did the Hellblade soundtracks as well. They're doing it for Hellblade 2. Senua's Sacrifice. That kid's really cute. Oh, okay. I love these guys. They're usually in the background doing chants or... <laughs> Their costumes are so cool.
There's always loads of story behind behind the songs as well. They're just really cool, but there's always a story behind them. I know that's easy. That everyone says that. Ariana Grande fans will say, "Oh, there's a story behind her heartbreak," and all that. Ah, shut the fuck up. No, there is actually there's actual plots behind each song, and I think they've probably put it in the description of this, so I'll have a look after. So the, uh, there's obviously a lot of symbols and a lot of runes and stuff, and I think that was the Colverat or Colverat symbol. It'll be a variant of the sun runes, obviously, but, um, yeah, it's very cool. I'd love to have one of those drums in the background of here. Obviously, I've got the runes on pendants here, I don't know if you can see them. Um, similar ones, but I'd love to have a, a drum like that in the background next to Artemis here, maybe in that gap there. They should do, I don't know, I don't think they do, but they should do merchandise, which is themed like that. They probably couldn't do runic drums like that, because they'd be really expensive to make. And if you did it on a very franchise level, they wouldn't be able to make them. Well, it'd be harder to make them the quality that you see in these music videos. But it, I think they should make, sort of, they probably do make t-shirts, but it'd be really cool to see some of these designs on t-shirts. And they make a lot of money from it, too. I think we've all had that uh, idea to charge a bison before. I have. Spyro style. Let's see. I Know Anna is the first song from Arnold's third studio album, Drift. Yeah, so I think Lifer was the, the second one, I think. And then there was one before it, but I was obsessed with Lifer, and that was the one that they went live with. Seven o'clock. Oh, the, no, that's not the, the launch of it. I've got the chant that they always say at the start. Let's read. The lyrics for this piece are mainly taken from Bracteates, golden circular coins and amulets found in Northern Europe that date from the 4th to 7th century CE. They're often fitted with decorated rim and loop, which indicates that they were meant to be worn and perhaps provide protection. Fulfill wishes or for divination. The, Brachiat the Bracteates feature a very significant, significant iconography, iconography, I can't speak today, it's too early to be speaking. Influenced by Roman coinage, they were predominantly made from Roman gold, which was given to the North Germanic pupils as peace money bribes to not come and beat the absolute living shit out of the filthy Romans, you mean. Uh, Germanic peoples is peace money. In Anno Anna, the listener has the chance to delve into a collection of likely encoded spells from the migration period and get a touch of magic from the Dark Ages. The intention of this piece is to playfully reconnect to an incantation language, incantational language of a period where the North was richer in gold than any other region. Our forefathers presumably enjoyed a time of great prosperity and it may may make us rethink how dark these ages really were it seems to be a very common misconception it's mainly nordic slander slander against nordics to make sort of 
Northern Europeans look barbaric and all they did was kill. They were very good at killing, but they did some other things too. Uh, Drift has been mastered significantly lower in volume than most modern releases to achieve a greater dynamic range. I don't know any of this, but deeper low end, transparent transients, and a wider stereo image. If you want it louder, turn up the volume on a proper sound carrier. That's interesting. I don't. I understand nothing. It's like it reminds. I feel like how my mum must feel like when I talk to her about my PC and the components inside there. But I absolutely love this group. They're amazing. They're my favourite. I, tr I want them to make more. I, I, I really want fighty, sort of pumped up songs. But as I say, there's there's a story behind every one of them. And in their life, uh, um season or um, album, um, they had a story for each one. And I think all of them strung together. And my favourites were In Majin or Majidun and um, Hamra Hippia. Uh, which I won't play now, but you should look into them, especially the live versions of them. I think they, these guys definitely sound better live, personally. Just because all of the grunts and, and chants and growls just... I don't know, just... That, not to say that it's not good when it's pre-recorded like this, it's fucking great, but... They're like the only group that I know of that are far better live um, than on a, a CD release. I would recommend them if you're like me and you're into Vikings and sort of ancient history and European stuff, but um, I love a look what they've got in the web shop. Such a cool design. So they have got merch then. Oh, they got. F oh, wait, are they plates and cups? Okay, alright. <laughs> yeah, they've got stuff. They've got stuff. Alright, I might need to get one of these because I. Wait. Scythian? Oh my, f I didn't know they did this, and I love the fucking Scythians. I suppose I'm just, like, promoting them now, but I really fucking love these guys. I want them to have as much success as possible. And I like Scythians. There's, I fucking love them. They're, and I've watched uh, sort of interviews where they're talking about their... their music. And they're just... They're so smart, and they're so tuned in, and... They don't describe the music as songs, they describe it as um, spells or, um, I forget, I'm, I'm lacking the word, um, yeah, I'll, I, it'll come to me after the video and I'll punch myself in the head for not thinking it. Uh, also the communities are always really, watching something like this, you always get the usual, you know, absolute bastards accusing them of being racist because they use sun runes happens to be Nordic runes that some of the you know nationalist socialists used even though these guys are not affiliated with them at all and obviously anyone oftentimes it's becoming a, a recurring thing now where in modern day if you're white and you're proud of the fact that you're white you're automatically a racist of course you do get the occasional wanker in these comments but for the most part they're really lovely people and they're not even like Nordic or Celtic, as this guy says, Mexico, and yet, he's got a uh, Arthurian name though, but there's something about their music that just seems to resonate with, well, seemingly with everyone, but as I say, with people who are descended from the people that would have made these sort of chants especially, and that's what I noticed when I first listened to it. I was just listening to the usual sort of vi I was looking for I remember it was like three years ago now, I was looking for sort of Viking themed songs to listen to while I go out for jogs, for runs. Um and then I found this and it transcended what I would describe as music and it it was it's cra it was crazy how obsessed I became with it very quickly. There's a lot of people talking about losing their grandparents, which is quite sad. Um it's, yeah, and they, as I say, they've done the, they did the Hellblade music for the new one as well, and for the, both of the trailers for the new one. It's so, it's, it is, someone just said trance, it is trance-like, it's not, um, it's like a, a ritual, it's a spell cast, it's another song, and I would really recommend you um, watch them live, and, oh yeah, I was going to see when the thing comes out, wasn't I?
Maybe it'll say what. I'm trying to find out when it comes out. August 19th. Oh, yeah, okay. Not long then. Two months. Have they released anything else? Drift. Let's see. Is this just Ananana? Yeah. Yeah, I think they've only dropped one song. Which makes sense, because uh, why do they drop all of them? I really hope they put do it live, and I hope there's battley songs. It's fine if not, but no, that's what that's what um, melds with me the most. If it's like proper pumped up, like uh, Hammer, Hippia, there's a, several others that I really really like. But I still like the trancey ones like this. But yeah, really really great song. Very good. And obviously, you're not gonna drop your best song. Oh, I hope. Wait. Is that this year or next year? I wonder. Because I've wanted to see these guys live. Oh, they're coming to me. Uh, at the start of next year. I am so fucking doing that, man. I am so fucking doing that. Oh, my God. Because I got into it and then lockdowns happened and then because i was when i got into it i was obsessed with them and i wanted to watch them live but i never really thought about it logically because they were always they like scotland and like london i'm in the north of england and they're actually doing it in manchester very nice very very nice yeah i'm so going to that i'm gonna have to like proper look into which were the best seats or you know but <sighs> well i'm excited now uh, but yeah, great, great song. I can't wait for the whole thing to come out. I don't know. I would hope that they drop a few more before the album comes out. Um, but then at the same time, I don't blame them if they don't. Wow, okay. Well, yeah, good song. Uh, I'd recommend listening to other, other stuff. As I say, I'm going to be... Uh, I am going to go to... Genuinely, I'm going to go to the live performance I've wanted to for ages. I might have to get one of these t-shirts, too. I really like that Scythian design. And they're a great company. I, I want to support them. Because they're doing something very different. All of the other Viking... I, I like a lot of other Norse things. Um, bands... But I don't think any of them have been unplugged as much as this without modern instruments all the time. A lot of their music is like vocal, growls, chants, brrr, sort of thing, guttural, and a lot, I think I think they I don't think they use any kind of metal instruments. I, I think they just use like bones and stuff from what I've seen anyway, and it it comes across very well. It's fucking amazing, and I would hope that. Um, they get the respect they deserve soon. They already, like, I know a lot of people are obsessed with them now. Um, and, you know, they were in Vikings, they were in Hellblade. I want them to become, like, the go-to soundtrack guys for anything Nordic or Viking or Germanic. I think that would be really cool. If they ever make a film about the Scythians, which they should, um, particularly the, uh, the West Scythians and the Black Sea Scythians, these guys should be the people that do the music for it. You can, I can just imagine, like, battle scenes with these guys, with their music in it. It would just be on another level to anything ever seen before. But yeah, really, really great. Check out their other music. It's fucking superb. I'd love to watch it now, you know, but this video is going to be just about reacting to this. Um, if you enjoyed the video, smash a like. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm particularly interested to see what people that have never been exposed to this sort of music have to say. But don't insult them, because I will block you, or ignore you, you know. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, have a good day. Bye-bye.